I'm Jacob, I'm Yuri. and we're going for a drive. Two thousand nineteen Volvo V ninety cross country. So this is an off roading beast, sort of. It's kind of like a battle wagon. Kind of, yeah. So you get the plastic cladding, which means you can go off road. And it's like two inches higher or something. That's right. But what's the thing that we noticed right away when we saw this? Huge rims. So these are rims because they're massive, not wheels. <laughs> and these are an accessory option, which I believe you have to get from the dealership. So they are 21s. 21s. 21 inch wheels on a wagon. It's insane that this has these wheels. And this is like a stock car from a luxury brand. Yeah, and it's a cross country meant for off-roading. <laughs> yeah, and you really know that when you look really down low, you can see how much clearance there is. Exactly. Now, I will talk about ride quality first because of these wheels. So because you get these wheels on the cross country, ride quality is quite stiff. To be honest, as much as I love these wheels, I would probably option smaller ones if I was actually buying this. No joke, I'd probably find bigger ones. <laughs> I like, I love the way this thing looks. It's so hilarious. It's hilarious. Let's get into the horsepower and torque before we go any further. Sounds good, Yuri. We have the same old two liter four cylinder in every single Volvo, but this one is supercharged and turbocharged. Do you like the supercharger and turbocharger? I like it, I don't love it. I honestly think the T5 is the better choice with just the turbo, but you cannot get any other option on this one, you have to get the T6. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, you live with it, it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. I just prefer the T5 drivetrain. Keep it in drive. Don't bother shifting with the paddles. They didn't give you any anyways. It's an eight-speed transmission, and like every other Volvo, it shifts very smoothly as long as you don't use the shifter yourself. So you got sidetracked again there. Horsepower and torque. <laughs> Sorry about that. 316 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. And it pulls pretty hard. There's torque at very low RPM, which is nice. It's definitely got a good amount of speed. Yeah, exactly. Like you probably don't really need more than this in most cars, which is really nice to have just this amount of power. Now back to that suspension. We do not have the optional air suspension. So we just have regular old suspension and it's quite good. But like I said, a little bit on the stiff side probably has something to do with the big wheels. And we do have several different drive modes. So we click this little button and then we have eco, comfort, off-road, dynamic, and individual. You cannot use off-road unless you're below a certain speed, which makes sense. Yeah, dynamic's the one you want to be in for any time you go fast. I feel like dynamic you want to be in in every Volvo. I don't mind eco. It does a lot more turning off the engine for the auto stop. That is true. But, you know, the auto start stop is very, very aggressive in Volvos. Exactly, so I don't really like it. But if you're trying to save gas, whatever. I guess. And eco mode does help for pilot assist. I feel like it doesn't get too aggressive when tailing up onto someone. Yeah, and this does have pilot assist and I love it. Yuri doesn't love it, but he likes it. We will do a pilot assist episode in the future. That's comparing right. every single kind of thing. Well, the top three. Let's be realistic here. Well, whatever we can do. There's only two of us. Honestly, life's, I know. life's hard. We're trying our best. We are trying our best, guys. We're trying our medium. No, no, we, I'm trying my best. We could try harder. We probably could. We'd probably ruin our relationships. Yeah. And, Burnout. Subscribers would go down. Like these guys are trying too hard. Pick now. up a drug habit and yeah. something like that. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about the looks. I really like how this thing looks overall. I like the raised ride height. I prefer this to the V90. I think this looks more battle wagon, like you said. I love battle wagons. You know what I love the most? What's that? That one that Johnny Lieberman uh, reviewed, the AMG one. Yeah, the Mercedes. Rest in peace, Motor Trend on YouTube. Yeah. That one was like, I want that. Oh, that is in the In real coolest. life. Yeah, yeah. Would you get that or an E63 S AMG? Oh, man. I'd do that for sure. No doubt about it. It's basically a monster truck yeah, yeah, wagon, yeah. but I really like the E63 S AMG. That's better, man. That's better. It's way cooler. But, oh, man. Give me the E63 S drivetrain in that. Was it already? No, it was an e, I think it was an E400. Okay, whatever. I would take, yeah, yeah. Back to the battle wagon looks. All right. The headlights, same old Thor's hammer on every other Volvo. Pretty much same old Volvo. Yeah, taillights. Wagon style, love it. Exactly, nice LEDs. We do have cross country written on the rear bumper, just like the old cross country models did have. Yeah, it's cool. It's a nice little touch. It's like a throwback. throwback. Yeah. And I noticed that the front end does have a lot more cool, like front bumpy stuff in the front bumper. Yeah, it definitely does have a little bit there. Do you like the grill? I do like the grill. Obviously, but it did look like a BMW from far away at one point. Yeah, it was weird. We both saw it at a distance. We're like, is that a BMW? No, that's our Volvo. I think the sun was hitting it straight on. And because that big emblem in the middle, it looked like two separate front grills. And because BMW grills are now getting bigger, it kind of yeah. like tricked us. Do you like the look of the plastic cladding on the bumpers or would you prefer it be painted? I think it would look way better painted, but less battle wagon like. I have a proposition for you. What's that? wider fender flares, but painted. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm saying wider than the cladded flares. Oh, I would love that for sure. Then it'd be sicker. Yeah, yeah. 
But then it would be like an Audi thing, like an RS model, because they get like really wide arches and they do have an all road. I also do like the plastic cladding that we have like slightly higher above the side skirts on the door. I think that looks very rugged. I have another looks thing to talk to you about. What's that? That rear cage we have. Oh, the interior looks. You can see it when you look through the car from behind, that counts as looks. But this does have tinted windows, it's kind of hard to see. It's not hard to see at all. Every time I've seen a cage in the back, I feel like it's always been in a Volvo wagon. This is true. Should we do a Rex test? Hit him with it. Oh. Good boy, look at that. Cage. Box test. Even with the cage in there, we'll still manage to get 11 boxes. Where do you get those boxes? Patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Oh. Carpet. <laughs> Visor test. Let's no, find out. It doesn't pass. We know it doesn't no, no, pass. No, no, we're doing it. I, don't, I refuse. Yeah, well, we're doing it. Three, two, one. Fail. We'll never know if the passenger one passes. <laughs> uh, it, does, it does fit a medium. I can't believe you refused the visor test. <laughs> it does fit. <laughs> fail. <laughs> <laughs> it does fit a medium cup of Timmy's coffee, but a small cup is like right on the edge. And I I it, think that's a fail. That was like the first one where we noticed it was a fail. Yeah. So you can put it in this little section here and it passes. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> and spills. Exactly. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Passes, does, flying colors. Doesn't rewind satellite radio stations. Although I have noticed that this infotainment is a little bit laggy compared to the new generation of infotainments in the S60. Yeah, because of that new chip in the V60. Exactly. So when this one gets refreshed, it'll probably get that. And hopefully, like we said in our XC40 video, which you've probably seen by now, they need to add hard buttons, do a hard button concept for the infotainment, and I refuse to speak about the infotainment anymore. Except the climate control. The climate control is automatic, and we got out of some non-automatics, and what do you have to say about that? I'm getting more used to automatic climate control, and I kind of like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, watch our other Volvo videos if you want to know about infotainment. I'm actually sick of speaking about it because they've made it the same across the board, which is fantastic, but it's the same things I don't like in each one. Exactly. And the gauges. The gauges are cool, but exactly the same as all the other Volvos. Actually, I have one thing I haven't talked about before. What's that? So when we go to our settings and we change our looks in my car, display, display themes, glass minimalistic performance, and chrome rings, it changes the way it looks here. I don't like the gradients in chrome rings. Fair enough, it does look kind of old. It makes it look cheese. I agree. Gradients are 2007, 2008, and you're <laughs> 2000 and late. All right, I think it's time for you to drive after that little rant. There's something about Volvos that I haven't mentioned before. Really? I love the locking sound. <laughs> it sounds so rich car to me that... It is a very fancy sound. Like, probably the best. I agree. There's nothing I hate more than locking a car and hearing a horn. Like, imagine going home and it's like... Yeah. Like, oh, come on, man. Very annoying. So concentrating back on the trunk now, our cage does fold up, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is nice. But you need to take out the privacy cover to fold it up. This is true. And that cage is meant for when you have stuff in the back, if you get in an accident, it doesn't fly forward and destroy everyone in the passenger compartment. Yeah, so they actually do have a separate dog cage. That's not the real dog cage. The best part, though, is this does have the folding floor panel, so you can hang your groceries up like you could in the XC40. Yeah, it makes a separate little compartment there. And it also has like five or six grocery bag hangers on the side, no matter what. Yeah, that's true. Yuri loves grocery bag hangers. This Volvo also does have the piano black buttons on the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, it does. And they do look premium, I'm not gonna lie. They look better than the XC40 buttons, which are matte black, but it is probably nicer to have matte black because you don't have to muddy yeah, it up. Exactly, you don't have to clean it. And there is some gloss black in here, not as substantial as other ones, but it is around the shifter and stuff like that. I'm kind of disappointed that this nice wood grain interior isn't lighter. I have this nice walnut. Looks I, beautiful. I just love light interiors. Yeah, some of them are pretty nice. I do like the dark ones. This one's a little bit too dark, I think. But just like every other Volvo, this interior is absolutely stunning. All very, the materials. Very luxurious. So top notch. But the funny thing is, after getting out of the Rolls Royce and getting into this, even though this is top notch for normal life. This felt like it was this broken. This felt like not that good compared to Rolls Royce, which is insane to show you how crazy Rolls Royce is. But compared to everything else, this is amazing. And just like all the other Volvos, we have the option Bowers and Wilkins sound system and it is absolutely booming. Yeah, they got that thing that makes it seem like it's an opera house. That's right. The best part about it is, is when you turn off the volume or like change the channel, it stops and it sounds like a whole band just stopped playing and you hear the echo still. I notice that every time, it's cool. And these seats are very comfortable, pretty well bolstered. They are sports seats. We do not have massaging, but we do have heated seats. Yeah, we do. We don't have a heated steering wheel in this one, but we had one in the XC40 and that heated steering wheel got so hot 
I had to turn it down from level three. Personally, you can never make a heated steering wheel too hot. Really? If I need my hands to be warm, the hotter the better. Imagine if the Range Rover metal ring got hot. I feel like that might be too hot for you. Maybe. <laughs> But speaking of cooled things, this does have the premium package, so we actually have a cooled glove box, so you can store your cold drinks in there. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, not that we will today, because it's really cold out. And just put them on the roof. Yeah, yeah. Since this is the V90, it is the longest wagon that exists for Volvo. The rear seat room is quite good. And we can fold the headrests. Through the infotainment. Which we're not gonna talk about anymore. No. Oh, this does have parking and stuff. Yeah, it has all that stuff. Cool 360 cameras, pretty much the same stuff we've talked about in every single Volvo video. Very good resolution, no complaints about that, other than being able to display the 360 and the backup camera at the same time. That kind of brings me to something I want to talk about now. I think we need to winter drive, rally, and drift the cross country to see what it's really about. I would love to do that, Yuri. So Volvo, hook it up. We want to rip this thing around a winter course, see what your cars are really made of. Yeah, that would be super fun. Test out that serious all-wheel drive system, because this is all-wheel drive. So let's get into the price and talk about the other competitors in this very busy category. Would you like the price first or the competitors first? Competitors. I think there's pretty much only one, and that is the Audi All-Road, technically. Nothing Subaru has technically competes with this right now, does it? No, this is premium. So it would have been like an Outback back in the day when Volvo wasn't as premium. Yeah, Volvo was always kind of premium, but now it's like definitely premium. Yeah, they took like a huge step ahead. Yeah, because Volkswagen also has the Alltrack, which is kind of close, but it's again, not premium. So pretty much any lifted wagon with plastic cladding over the wheels. Yes, that's the only competitor <laughs> technically. <laughs> we haven't driven the Audi all-road yet, but we'd love to, so eventually we will probably get to that. So now to the price. This starts at $62,500. Canadian? And the as-tested price is $71,500. That kind of falls in line with where I expected it to sit. Yeah, I thought it would be a little bit more expensive, like the high 70s. Because the V90R design was like 90,000 Canadian, right? Yeah, it was something around there, I think. I honestly don't remember. So if you had to pick this or the V90R design, which one would you take? I love that bursting blue on the V90R design. So I kind of want that paint color on this one with a wide body color match, non cladding stuff. So you want a mix of both? Yes. I can't pick between both of them. I would take the cross country. I think I love the battle wagon look more than I like the sleek fast wagon look because it's not AMG fast. And if it's not AMG wagon fast, I'm not interested. That is kind of true, think but I just <laughs> love how that R design looked. That blue really sealed the deal for me. Yeah, you're so you've been suckered. I have been suckered. So let us know if you're wagon shopping, if you're battle wagon shopping, which one you picked, which one you looked at, why you didn't pick something else. Or if you looked at a crossover or an SUV because some of them fit more boxes than this. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this video, check out our Patreon page, and join our membership on YouTube. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that.